lovely darling viewers, it's Jen here at Chuck Her Joy. This time I'm reviewing Kiss and Spell by Shanna Swenson. This is the seventh book in the Enchanted Ink series. This is urban fantasy meets chiclet, and this book in particular reads like a rom-com. Uh, so if you haven't been reading the series, I suggest you go check out book one, Enchanted Ink. This book will spoil previous books in the series, particularly the ending of book six. So totally go check out book one first. I love it. This is one of my favorite series. Trust me, do it. So book seven sees Katie and Owen get stuck in literally a romantic comedy. There is a spell that has them stuck living out their dreams and apparently the spell thinks that romantic comedy is Katie's dream life and so she gets stuck in this idealized Manhattan and she has to find Owen and they have to figure out how to escape, basically. The end of book six saw Katie and Owen both getting magic, and so we start off with Katie learning how to do magic and having magic lessons with Owen and Rod down in the basement. Um, but they can't let anybody know that Katie has magic because then people would figure out that Owen also has magic still, and there's still that public perception thing about his parents being evil, so Owen must be evil, so we can't let anybody outside this very small group of people know. Um, so Owen, who is her boyfriend and works in theoret theoretical magic, and Rod, who is a lot better at explaining how magic works, are down there teaching her. And Katie has such an aptitude for magic. She's learning it so quickly. And of course, Katie eats this up. She loves it. She's always been a little bit bummed that she found out magic existed, but she couldn't do it herself. So this is her chance to run around and save the day and be able to, like, get her own coffee and not have other people do things for her. Um, but as she's learning magic, it's maybe not everything that she, it was cracked up to be, because being, being able to do magic also makes her vulnerable to other people's magical attacks. So they start investigating a disappearance of a bunch of elves. Um, at first I think it's just the PR thing. People don't trust Owen and don't trust MSI and Sylvester the Elf Lord is spreading rumors so they assume that people are just quitting of their own free will but when Katie's assistant Perdita who is an elf goes missing they they know that she wouldn't just leave without saying anything like in the past she's come to Katie and told her hey things are weird here's what I'm hearing um, the fact that she wouldn't even check with Katie before she left is kind of suspicious. So Katie starts investigating. So she and Owen end up following one of the elves to this warehouse, and then they black out, basically. And when they reawake, Katie is stuck in this alternate reality that she doesn't realize is happening. She thinks that she thinks an idealized version of New York is her real life, and she has this job working in the coffee shop attached to a bookstore that Owen now owns um, but Katie is dating and supposed to be enga getting engaged to somebody else and so we have this romantic comedy aspect of Katie falling for her incredibly cute and handsome boss who she gets along with perfectly and it feels like they've known each other forever and of course the reason why it feels like they've known each other forever is because it's Owen her her boyfriend in the other real world um, so I love the fact that it is literally a romantic comedy. It is playing with all the tropes. Katie is walking down the street and she's hearing pop music as a soundtrack to her life. She's experiencing her life through montages and she's she's starting to lose her magic. So she's starting to like wake up from the spell and like slowly realize that something is weird and something is off. And so the main part of this book is the two of them Owen and Katie finding each other, figuring out what's happening, and then uh, managing, like, figuring out if they can escape this spell and get back to normal New York and save the elves that have gone missing. This book is awesome. Like, I love the romantic aspect. Like, I love the rom-com spell. Like, all that is awesome. But also, we have Katie and Owen getting to spend a lot of time together and getting to spend it away from work and getting to spend it, because they're supposed to be living out this romantic comedy so they're getting to go on dates and do things like actually have a normal first date um and really do all the dating stuff that they haven't been doing because 
the world was in danger. And so they're, they're still trying to figure things out and save the day, but it's at a much different pace that allows the two of them to really get to know each other better um, and really develop their relationship and have character development um, as individuals, but also as a couple, which I just, we needed this in that series. Um, and also I just ship Katie and Owen together, so any amount of time they get to spend together anytime is awesome. I think that's it for not spoilers. I'm going to do like a more spoilery section now, so if you haven't read book 7, Kiss and Spell, I do really love it. It is one of my favorite books in the series. It is definitely a 5 star rating. If you, you know, let me know what you think of the series so far, and um, we're going to do spoilers starting now. So this isn't the first time Katie's had magic in the series, um, but it's the first time it's been her own magic, and she's really had to learn how the how magic works. And so we get to see magic from her perspective. So far in the series, we've seen, uh, so like the last book, we got to see Owen deal with being a magical immune, and it didn't suit her. But being magical kind of does suit Katie, and it's kind of a bummer when it starts disappearing and she starts returning to be an immune. Um, but also Katie's okay with that because that's her normal and that's what makes her special and important and she has gotten used to it. Um, and she's gotten used to working with Owen in that capacity where Katie is the immune but Owen can do magic and so she really just wants to get back to that. Um, both, both of them being at their own normals and Owen just doesn't get it like how can you not want to have magic. Um, and so he's trying to wrap his brain around the fact that he and Katie see the world differently, but that it's fine because they complement each other. Um, but Owen had such a rough time being immune that he just, he doesn't understand why Katie would want to be that. Um, and it takes him a while to get that. Um, so the whole magic not having magic, it's kind of getting, I kind of hope that they go back to the normal and stay that way for the next couple of books. Because the bouncing back and forth thing was kind of getting annoying. Like, just be immune and be magical and just, like, pick one. Don't, like... It was fun to kind of explore these, but also I feel like we're good now. We've explored them. Let's not do that again. Um, like, the implications of being magical or immune on different characters. Like, we got it. I love everything they have to go through on these dates and the things they're doing. And they're, like, having this... They first discovered they could do magic in the spell and they're like running around the bookstore and shooting off spell like lights and like having it snow and it's adorable. Um, and they go through all these like stereotypical romantic things, which we kind of saw in one of the previous books where it was like Christmas and they were like having the, they were fake dating to trying to draw somebody out. But this time it's actually the two of them. They're like, let's, let's do it. Let's go on the first date. Let's go like embrace this and just be a romantic cheesy couple and do all these things and just have fun with it because if we're going to be stuck doing this we might as well enjoy it. So I loved all the different things they do as that. They start noticing that there are other the other people who have gone missing are in the town somewhere and figuring out how to wake people up from the spell um, which was cool but I, I love getting to see everybody and what their dreams were like Mac the magical enforcer his dream is to just like sit in the park and play chess all day and that's kind of adorable. Or um, Perd Perdido just wants to be a waitress and have like a normal job. You get to see Earl who just wants to work in the science fiction section of a bookstore, which is totally my dream too. So like I love Earl even more after this book. Um, and then they start the resistance and Katie be gets voted to be the resistance leader because she's immune. So she's not, she doesn't have the same vested in interests as either the elves or the wizards. And so she uses neutral ground, and then Katie really has to step up and be a leader, and it suits her pretty well. Um, but there's also this whole not being able to tell Owen everything because he needs to, like, take a back seat um, for perception reasons. And I, I kind of love that dynamic of Katie being in charge and Owen having to, like, take, take notice from her for once. And then Katie has to go through and spend all her magic to become immune again because that's the only thing that's kicked them out of there. Because the, the like, a portal that lets them out of the spell is warded, and so you need an immune to get through it, so Katie has to go back to being an immune, um, which is cool. Katie finally does manage to escape through the portal and go through the wards, and all the elves are doing, like, they think there's this giant army amassing, but actually it's 
the elves are all distracted being brainwashed using disco which was just a hilarious scene um and a great mental image so i thoroughly appreciated that whole thing and katie's gotta like dance her way across the dance floor and replace the mixtape um with a new playlist that jake ends up making so again using some of the minor characters um so we get to see jake kind of step up and kind of play his part saving the day using his magic which is you know in music um so that was fun and then the final very last thing that happens is that owen finally proposes and it's like the perfect proposal for the two of them. They spent all this time figuring out what they do and don't like and what isn't isn't romantic. And Owen finds like the perfect way to do it. Like at the end of a end of a battle, but also like up on the roof and just the two of them alone and it's so romantic and so great. So I love the way that this book ends. Um so yeah. I definitely love Kiss and Spell. Like I said, it's a five out of five stars. It's definitely one of my favorites in the series. I love the pacing. I love just how cheesy and romantic and adorable it is. Um, I thought it was amazing. So let me know in the comments below if you have read this one and what you thought of Kiss and Spell. Uh, what do you think of the series in general? I'm going to keep reading it. I cannot wait to get to book nine and the actual like wedding. Like, yes. Um, so yeah. Um, peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.